design phase in, in terms of um, working with the architects in terms of designing the school. And I think that that was the best process that we could have gone through that really helped us. Right. With that, uh, we'll answer right. any questions you may have. We have a motion for the green sheet. So moved. Second. Okay. Ms. Bergen. Um, well, we're all very excited about uh, this going forward. Um, and I, uh, it's wonderful. I really just had uh, two questions um, from the architect and Slightly off topic for Mrs. William. Um, my only question is up on um, the proposed upper level plan. The end on page 60, the four classrooms yes. appear to look out over a roof surface. Yes. So are they looking out simply on blacktop? Is there an option to maybe doing a little bit of green roof or a, a, some sort of topping? Or what does that look like from those? Yes. The, the roofs uh, will be green roofs, uh, vegetated roofs um, are part of our stormwater management plan and uh, so that you're, you, we, we were very careful that any equipment and so on was located around in the back area of the building kind of uh, over top of that uh, service area back in that back corner so that the roofs are clean, they're going to be vegetated uh, as we look down on it. Great. Great. I think I put I put a little cautionary there. Well, Steve is the architect and he has a visionary of what the building would want to look like, but I also look at it from an environmental standpoint and all the regulations that we have to follow through. We're at a very preliminary conceptual stage of design and we have many more design issues to resolve as we uh, further develop the plan. Um, it is our intent to install geothermal exchange system on the site and should that be allowable uh, within the uh, uh, given site constraints. Most of the mechanical equipment under that system is within the building, and you do not have a lot of extra on rooftop units that you see. However, if that is not feasible, you, we may have some of the mechanical units on the roof. But um, again, we have many issues to resolve, so I don't want to come out with a blanket statement that it will be a green pasture on the roofs either at this point. Understood. I understand. It, would, it would be wonderful, though, to see. Absolutely. It, um, and then I just wanted to check in with Mrs. Flynn since we've got you here on how the satellite campus is going. <laughs> so far, so good. We've made some recommendations. Um, and certainly, um, I, the way we feel, certainly at Oakland Terrace, is that whatever we have for our students, we're going to make it work. So um, we are just looking forward to next year, and we're looking forward to moving ahead with our instructional program. And Mr. Wong? Uh, I had one kind of technical question and one more of an elaboration question. So you mentioned um, a geothermal exchange system. Um, do, could you elaborate one on um, your the proposed green strategies in the school? Um, and second, I, I was reading through the technology infrastructure. Could you tell me what a, a video over internet protocol is? Because I, I, I don't really have expertise in that area. Sure. Um, first of all, green technologies. Um, the whole construction program and design uh, approach is, is really um, um, uh, enhanced by a lot of sustainable designs and, and environmental regulations that are, are really constantly moving at this point as we speak. In fact, there's a new law that's going to come into effect as May 4th of this year that is going to look at a lot of green technology for not only the building component, but stormwater management from the outside as well. And as Steve has mentioned that most of our building is going to go towards not only the green roofs from the uh, on top of the roof structures, but um, there are uh, the presentation that Mr. Lavornia and I did several months ago about full sustainable design movement that MCPS is moving towards that includes not only the new construction portion that are going to get lease certification under six categories for the uh, school construction program, but also in operation of the building, education of the school. Um, and community and students, as well as it's, it's really a cultural change. Um, so we're looking at very comprehensive green movement for the, as a whole system, and that's how we look at it. And the recycling program is another small portion of it. Energy efficiency, um, you see in uh, photovoltaic system. You know there are things that we are looking at constantly piloting some of the projects, and we're you know we're looking at various different technologies. So it's not just the one technology I think that's going to put uh, over that. Uh, um, the voice over IP is is a um, 
it's, it's a technology communication data system that we, we've been using actually for the past three years. Um, it allows more capabilities than just the internet. It, it carries the voice you've seen. Um, some of the new technologies like go to meetings or you've seen Skypes or you've seen a lot of the things that are able to use not only the voice but the images and all this they're transport and we're just providing those backbone structures for our building so that um, in the future twenty years from now or thirty years from now, who knows what the technology three might years be now. or three years from now. But our, we're designing in mind of an infrastructure that is flexible and accommodatable for future needs as well. Mr. Barkley, and then Dr. Um, actually, to, to Tim's point, the, the, I think what, what we can say about these, the design of our new schools is they're wired and ready to go. And, and I really think that's part of what why we're using VoIP and, and, and really dependent on IP and, and seeing more wireless coming to our schools because it's really opening up the opportunities that the teachers will have and the flexibility that they'll have to move from class to class, not be tied to a classroom simply because you've got the capability of moving you know, with a, a workstation possibly from one place to the next. And, and so that's very exciting. Um, I guess I have a couple questions. And I didn't read through everything. I wasn't sure I saw it here. Um, are we able to or, or looking at um, solar voltaic panels here? I know that geothermal is going to be excellent, but is that a, an option that's going to be available um, and I'll say affordable here? And then the other issue was just in terms of design, and you spoke to this a little bit, um, are we looking at a, at a repeatable design here? Is this something that either can be repeated or is something that, that elements of it have been used in other places? You know, because I know that's a, a concern that we have. Sure. Um, first, with the photovoltaic system, um, as you know, there are eight schools currently in operation, and we're trying to identify additional eight school sites that are potential candidates. Uh, by the time this project is completed in August of 2012, I'm not certain that tax incentive is still going to be there for our vendors to be able to meet that numbers balanced. Uh, but however, one thing to note is that the uh, roof surfaces are becoming to be a very hot commodity. Um, you know, from the environmental standpoint, they would like to see green roofs uh, for stormwater management. From our option standpoint, we got, still got to reserve some portion of the roof for mechanical systems to support. Um, and then we got full rotate. And, and so there are many technologies, and there are some that I don't want to mention at this point, but we're constantly piloting um, new technologies uh, for energy efficiencies as well. So we're going to maximize the uh, use of the roof as possible. Um, and your second question was? Uh, prototype designs. Uh, I'm glad, actually, uh, Mr. Parker is here because Graham Parker has developed a prototype elementary school design that, has, that we've been utilizing. Um, Great Seneca Creek, Little Bennett, uh, Gibbs, as you are aware. I think there is a certain amount of prototype design that calls for um, a site. This site is a very challenging site, as Steve mentioned. Um, it's a very linear site that lends itself, and, and I don't think this is a design that we want to repeat for that reason. Uh, you have a site that has a change in level, it needs to long and skinny, and you can do the one. Exactly. So, um, but we are trying to utilize repeat designs as much as possible. Dr. Dante? Yeah, I just have a question about uh, students walking. You did say that they would be walking through um, the foliage. How dense is that? And would it be on these trails that are listed here? Yes, there's an existing trail that goes from the park up in the up, uh, top of the site. There's a uh, Planning. Yeah, Maryland yeah. National Capital Park Planning. I see. Yeah, we have to go back to it. Yeah, the mic. Mic, mic. That's all I want. Put the mic on. Uh, in the uh, uh, upper left-hand corner of the of the site plan, there's an existing park and planning park that has a path that goes through the community and goes all the way through the community. And people actually use that path now to go down to Metro. So people use it more than, than just to go to the school as they come along it. So it goes right along the edge of the property, and we're extending that path to go into the into the school entrance as well. Uh, the density of those, maybe that just looks that way in the picture, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'm just concerned about safety of children. Yeah. Um, the, the, the pedestrian access is one of our... Um, uh, 
critical safety factors that we 